Hey everybody, I just finished the live where I started this charcoal portrait and I'm going to finish it now for you. I'm going to be showing you some more of the Casey Bob bubble kit where I use this really cool sachet and I've got my acetone spray bottle here ready to make some bubble effects. So hang with me and let's do it. All right, you guys know I am all about some one-to-one -one measuring. It's just so easy when what I see on the computer screen is exactly the same size as what it is I'm painting or drawing. So I can use my proportion tool and do quick checks of measurements and it's just easy that way. And actually I like to draw what I see first and then I use the one-to-one -one measuring with the proportion tool to check that what I drew is correct. So I'm still exercising my eye and, and you know really learning to see and put down on paper what it is I see. But then I just make sure it's correct with the proportion tool and the one-to-one -one measuring. My new obsession with charcoal drawing is due to Casey Baugh. I've always loved his oil paintings, but then I saw his charcoal drawings and I just fell in love. I wanted to learn more about this technique. And that's when I discovered the Casey Baugh bubble kit. It was the charcoal sachet that I was most curious about. It's included in the kit along with a canister of fine loose charcoal. The sachet is the perfect way to apply light areas of charcoal to your drawing. Next in the kit is this spray canister which is perfect for holding acetone and that is how you get these amazing bubble effects. And the kit wouldn't be complete without some charcoal pencils, willow sticks, and a kneaded eraser. I found the Casey Bob bubble kit at edgeprogear.com. There you can also find a video of Casey Baw showing you how to use the kit and make the bubble effect. I am doing this charcoal portrait on the Strathmore paper. It's the 400 drawing smooth series. Um, three ply is best. Uh, the size is 18 by 22, but I ordered this paper as a roll. So it came as a pretty large roll. I just cut out the size that I wanted to use for my sketch. You may be curious as to what this white sheet of paper is all about. Well, I like to put a piece of paper over part of my drawing to block out any distractions. I also block out the same area on my reference image that is pulled up on the computer monitor. This way I can really focus in on one area without getting distracted. Now when I'm getting into some of the more detailed areas, I'll also tape a piece of paper like this onto my drawing paper that I can rest my hand on. This way it keeps my drawing clean. You don't ever really want to put your hands and fingers into your drawing. That's why you have the blending stump, the kneaded eraser, and other tools that you can put onto the drawing surface. The oils on your hands are really not conducive to the charcoal drawing. It can make an area that you've touched repeatedly, especially uh, difficult to work with after that. You can see that I'm using the blending stump a, a lot during this sketch. I, I pretty much started the entire drawing with the blending stump and the charcoal sachet, which I love using by the way. <laughs> but the blending stump was the perfect amount of charcoal. I don't have to use a lot of pressure. I just keep one end of the blending stump that I can uh, roll into some of the loose charcoal that I have left over from when I sharpened my pencils. There's a little bit of the charcoal residue on the sandpaper block and I can just push the blending stump into that charcoal area and then use what's picked up in my drawing. So once I have the face pretty well established, then I'll start using some of the pencils just to begin getting down some of the darkest areas, but I still don't go in with a heavy dark pencil just yet, just in case I need to make any tiny adjustments. So here you see I'm using the HB charcoal and I'm still not really pressing too diff, you know, down too hard. I don't want to, I don't want to dent or scratch the paper, even though this is a pretty sturdy Bristol type paper. I mean, it's, it can handle some pressure, but I just want to keep everything light. I, I don't want to do anything too permanent until I am really towards the end and I have established many of the values that I'm going to be putting throughout the portrait. 
the main thing here is I want the eyes to be the vocal point. They're really the driving force of this portrait. They say so much. So my plan at this point is to keep building up the darkest areas, which are just above the iris and along that top lash line. So I'm going to continue building values throughout the face, but every now and then I'll go back and revisit those areas and use a softer, darker charcoal pencil on top of the lighter charcoal pencils that I've used in the beginning. So I started with the HB. I'll be moving over eventually to a 2B and finishing uh, the darkest dark areas with a soft 4B, possibly a soft 6B. So that's the plan. Going in and making some marks that are going to be accents using the 2B charcoal pencil. So these are going to be bold marks, marks that I'm not going to be blending. They're just going to stand on their own. Texture time. I have been waiting for this moment. So I started the charcoal drawing the day before. This is day number two. So I'm what you see here is I'm lightly dusting the paper with some of that loose charcoal using the opposite end of the sachet, the you know the open end. And in order to make the bubble effects with the acetone in the spray bottle, I'm actually using uh, acetone in a cup right now and a Q-tip that I'm dipping into it and just touching it and flicking it a little bit onto the surface to um, allow the acetone to disperse the charcoal powder. The acetone bubble effect works, it, it won't work on areas where you've pressed charcoal into the paper. The charcoal has to be lightly sitting on top of the paper in order to create these effects. Once the acetone hits those areas, it pretty much solidifies it to the paper. So you don't have to worry about losing it once you lift the um, drawing up vertically again. So I have the um, drawing laying almost flat while I do these um, drops. So they're pretty permanent. I, I'm going in, you know, slowly and carefully because actually this is the first time I've ever used the acetone bubble effect in a charcoal drawing and I'm loving it. I think it's working out well. And I did find that you are able to kind of draw over some of the bubble effects if you feel like maybe you needed to soften up the effect a little bit in certain areas. You may want to experiment with different ways to apply the acetone to the dusted charcoal. So I started with the little Q-tip. I'm also going to try, you can see how loose that powder was, it just dropped down. Now I'm going in with the spray bottle. I, I put the drawing up vertically because I wanted these areas to drip down into the drawing. So in order for that to happen, the drawing needed to be in a vertical position. And there you can see, how, that's how light the charcoal powder is. I mean, it's really just sitting there. So once I get some of the bubble effect um, solidified and I know I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's pretty well secured with some workable spray fixative. So far, I've used a Q-tip dipped into a jar with the acetone. Now I'm using the spray bottle. Even though this is the first time I'm using the acetone, I did some experimenting on the computer with Photoshop. So you could see the reference uh, earlier in the video where I have really distressed the outer edges of this portrait reference image. So I felt very free to experiment and play around in the Photoshop application. That way when it came to this part, even though it was the first time I was playing with acetone, I had a little bit of confidence towards what I wanted my outcome to look like. All right, I had lightly established an area for the hand. Now I'm going to get in there and create some detail. And just like when I started working on the face, I'm using the blending stump that I am rolling into the charcoal residue that's left on my sandpaper block. And I'm using that to draw with. It's the perfect amount of value going down. And if I decide something's not quite in the right place, the charcoal's just lightly sitting on the surface. I can still 
um, work into that and remove areas if I need to using the kneaded eraser. I have turned my brain off and I am telling my hand to draw the shadow shapes that it sees. I am saying, brain, I'm not drawing a hand. I am merely laying down shapes of darks that I see in my reference. And when I'm finished, hopefully, I will see the hand that is here in my reference. Okay, not only am I looking for shapes, but I'm also paying close attention to any angles and how those shapes are oriented to say a plumb line. Is it straight up and down? Is it slightly tilted? Um, those angles are going to be important in really helping the viewer understand how this hand is positioned. As I'm drawing, I'm also asking myself the question, what parts do I need to leave out? There's always a question of editing when you're creating a work of art. Now, I feel like you can just put in the minimum amount of information to explain what it is you're seeing. If I can do it in five strokes, then that's all I need to put in. But if I need to put in more strokes for the viewer to understand what they're seeing, then I need to continue. So I'm always asking myself, is that enough strokes or do I need to keep going? Another key point to this drawing is the fact that my reference is a black and white image. I took this photo at the American Frontier Productions in Kansas and it's a color photograph. So when I put it into Photoshop, knowing that I'm gonna be working in black and white with charcoal, I turned my reference to a black and white image. I also chose this image because it had great shadow detail. I find that when you're drawing or doing charcoals, if you're working from references that were taken in flat light, there's no significant shadow shapes for you to see, then that's just more difficult of a job for you. Now, a good experienced artist can create their own shadow shapes and pull that out, but especially if you're new and you're just starting, please select photo references that have really strong shadow shapes and really strong light shapes. You need that guidance to help develop volume and form. And that's gonna just help you, especially when you're a beginner. A funny thing that I discovered during this charcoal portrait is I love the feel of drawing and the charcoal on the paper and using the kneaded eraser and the acetone. Hated the mess. <laughs> oh my God. I had charcoal dust everywhere. So I think what I need to do going forward is perhaps get some drop cloths and cover up some things in my <laughs> studio that I don't want to be covered with charcoal dust. This charcoal portrait is part of my Western series and it's going to be titled Poker Face. So you can see here, there's some poker chips, got a little bit of shot glass whiskey action going on because what a uh, Western poker game is not complete without a little <laughs> nip of whiskey. Uh, he's got this little gun tucked in there just in case things get out of hand and it is available. It's a formal drawing that I've done on uh, the 400 Strathmore series Bristol. It's going to be framed and available on my website and I'm even thinking about um, offering this in print so you can check that out at westernsinwood.com. Again, I'm still editing in my mind. I am constantly thinking, what do I need to add to describe this scene? Also, what helps anchor? So I'm looking for areas of dark anchoring type shapes that will balance the composition. And then also, what do I need to add to describe the scene? What can I leave out that is not necessary? This is what's happening in my mind. Adding a little more texture here on the right, I dusted the area lightly with some charcoal powder that was loose, and now I'm spraying in some acetone. Another interesting way to make marks on your charcoal drawing is to dip a paintbrush into the acetone and into the loose charcoal powder, and then you can actually paint with it. I'm using a pretty old 
splayed out brush here. I just want to continue with some of that texture. Now be warned, the initial uh, marks that you lay down in this manner look pretty dark, but as the acetone dries, which is really quick, then it just lightens up a little bit more and it won't remain as dark as you initially see it. Getting creative here, doing a little tap tap with the brush against my hand to make some dark little flicked areas of charcoal and acetone. Two great things about working with the acetone as opposed to water or other liquids is that it evaporates faster than any other liquid and it leaves no residue. When I started this sketch, I had in my mind that I wanted to have a lot of different kinds of marks and texture throughout the portrait. And I feel like that I have achieved that. I've got some really nice, soft, smooth, well transitioned areas throughout the face. Then when we get into the hair, there's a lot of interesting texture created with different um, sticks and bricks and marks that I found to use with the charcoal. And then, you know, the bubble effect went in and created some more textures. Here we are with the 4B charcoal pencil, really just solidifying some of the areas to balance out the composition. And also, I believe I'm going to sign my name there, the COX signature with the 4B charcoal. And here's a look at where I'm at at this point, but let me uh, continue to work on this a little bit because I like to let it sit for a day, come back and, and look at it again. And I'm sure I'll make a couple of little adjustment marks. So I'll be sure to photograph the final, final version and show it to you here at the end. Enjoy this time-lapse replay while I photograph and load the final image of Poker Face.